everybody. Welcome in. Welcome in. So, happy July 4th, everyone. My goodness. Mm. Independence Day. It's going to be awesome. So, what we're going to do today is paint this scene, basically. An American flag seascape. The same one that we did on Memorial Day uh, back in 2022 for our Memorial Day seascape. I have a um, canvas print just like this you guys can get in my store. I have the 9-11 canvas print and then we just did a one yesterday as a practice. Very, very, very late last night. We did a practice version of the scene that's going to come out today. So even though we have all these colors on our palette, we're only really going to use five. I, I said five, but it looked like four. Five. So we're going to use bright red, uh, Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, midnight black, and titanium white. And the whole time I've been up here, I didn't even realize that I don't have any titanium white on my palette. Oh, that's the wrong color. Uh, why can you just never be ready? I just never be ready on time. It doesn't matter what I do. I was up here for like 10 minutes. Just sitting here looking at the canvas going, hmm, I wish the time, I wish the clock would go faster. And then I'm not even ready to paint. So I'm sorry, guys. I, I, I don't know why you guys watch me. I'm terrible. I suck. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me just get a little bit more paint out and then we'll be good to go. I don't know why I thought maybe I had enough, but apparently not so. So it's going to give you guys a chance to get your canvases ready. Make sure you cover it in Bob Ross liquid clear or linseed oil or some sort of similar wet oil blending medium so you can see that reflection in the canvas it's very wet look at that it's like a mirror so wet it's like a mirror so that's what you need you gotta have it wet like that in order for it to slide across and blend and all that stuff i can't believe i got i was up here for so long ready like i was gonna start 10 minutes early i was here so i was up here for so long and then i don't even have all the stuff that we need to get started so you guys are going to tell me where you're watching from, what's your favorite sandwich, and so I don't drop this, I'm going to set it down. What do you plan on doing today for the 4th? Are you at a barbecue that you just can't stand to be at and you had to sneak away and watch Paint with Josh on your, on your phone, right? Totally fine. I totally get it. Remember, if you're watching on YouTube, give me a thumbs up. If you're watching over on Facebook, make sure you open it up and you'll see all those little emojis along the bottom of the screen and you tap so all the little hearts start coming up. Same thing on TikTok. Tap, 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 tap that screen. The more you guys tap, the more hearts and the more likes and the more everything that we get, the more people are going to see the video. So why don't we come down a bit on YouTube? We're up a little bit high. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now, all I did in order to get the canvas as wet as it is right now was take our Bob Ross liquid clear, just like that, put it all over the canvas. So it's nice and wet and slick, and ready to go. But no matter if you're painting with Josh or if you're just starting, you're probably going to add too much liquid clear onto the canvas. So we need to take it and wipe it off. Get rid of all that stuff. Remember guys, tell me what you're doing. How many hot dogs have you had today? Or is burgers your thing, right? Burgers are my thing. But I mean, I love hot dogs and burgers. They're both amazing. So what are you putting on your burger at the barbecue? Are you having brisket? Are you fancy? Woo, having some tri-tip at the barbecue today. Woo, right? Let me know what you guys are eating. And all we got to do is wipe off that excess clear. See how much comes off like that? It's fantastic. So I want to know what you guys are eating because I haven't eaten a thing. I've had like four peanut M&Ms, just like not four bags, but like four, four single little peanut M&Ms. And uh, that's about all I've had today, a couple Red Bulls. So, woo, let's get ready to rock and roll, right? We're going to take our crimson and our red both on the brush together. We're going to drag them out like this and start to mix them in their own little piles, right? And that way it's not going to be just pure bright red and it's not going to be just dark crimson. You're going to have both on the brush. Look at all the paint that's on that brush, guys. Woo, looks like fire. Right? Then we're going to come up here and make one little strip just as long, uh, just as wide as the brush is. It's really all you need. And then leave a little dark area for our, our next bit, right? Now we're going to pop down two clicks and then go again. Just like that. And that way you don't have too much red on the canvas. You want a bigger dark space in between than you have the red on the canvas. So we'll go down again. And basically two clicks, all I mean is this, the width of the brush. So one, two, and that's where we want to put our next one, right? Just like that. So all we're doing is popping down an inch. We're putting on an inch, popping down two inches, putting on an inch, popping down two inches, putting on an inch, popping down two inches, right? And what? Well, one, two, three. Yes. Okay. The next one here, a little bit more of our crimson and a little bit more of the red, right? It's not going to be exactly the same as the, uh, as the other one below, but what we're going to do here just very lightly 
Dump on that last guy and go all the way across. Boom, just like that, all right? Don't have to have it be perfect. But you don't want to have too much red either. Remember, less red, more black, more space in between. This guy got a little skinny, so we're going to have to finagle him a little bit, but it's okay. All right, now, again, drop down two widths of the brush. So one, two, pop down into there, all the way across. About as straight as we can get. Doesn't have to be the most perfect thing, but just a little stripe of red. Doesn't have to be too big. The more bigger your red stripes, the more pink your painting is going to be versus red, white, and blue. Now, we'll come down for the very last one. Of course, can't get all 13 stars and stripes and all this stuff on here, so we'll do that very last one down around the bottom. Bang, unless you had a really big canvas. In which case, I would still only do the one, two, three, four, five, six black stripes, uh, six red stripes is all I would really do, no matter what size of the canvas we're on. Now, in between all these black stripes, there's no other color, right? It's all just black. There's no undercolor, it's just that clear canvas. Uh, the clear color on our black canvas, right? Now, I'm going to show you guys how we wash the brush. If you've never seen it, since we have a lot of red on this brush and we have a nice, clean, clear jar, it's going to be gorgeous, right? How's it look on, uh, on the talk? I can't see it. Okay, about right there. Okay, we're going to dunk that in. Just, you can see, it's about halfway up or halfway down, half empty, half full, however you are. We're going to take the brush and just dip the bristles in, just the tip. Watch this. Start wiggling it. Oh, that's going to be so cool. And you see why we keep it about half full, so you can take the bristles and spin it around inside the jar, containing it, having all the spray fall back down inside, right? Very cool. Keeps your house clean, but still, it's very wet. So you have to shake it into a can, just like that. Get off all the stuff, and then into the beater bucket. And you beat the devil out of that brush, just like that, right? It's an old golf ball basket, a little metal golf ball basket, down in the bottom of a five-gallon bucket with a trash bag inside so I can change out the bag and not have to ruin the bucket every time. I used to just put it down in the bucket, and then I would have to change the bucket every so often. <clears throat> and even though the buckets are only two bucks, right? It's not, not, not too bad. It's <laughs> still wasteful. So, it was funny. When I very first started painting, I was like, man, I spent all the money on the brushes and the paints and the canvases and the easel and everything. And now I gotta buy some weird thing to help clean the brushes with? I was like, nah, I'll go find something in the garage. And then eventually when I get good enough, I'll buy the real brush cleaning kit thingy. And four years later, one million followers later, we're still using that same nasty old golf ball basket. Just gross. Okay, now down here, you wanna leave it blank, just like this guy. It's gotta be dark. You don't wanna fill the blue all the way down to the tip of this red one right here. So we're gonna go with the Prussian blue first, which is the darker blue color. Right? It looks like black. It's almost the same exact color on your palette anyway. We're going to come up into here. Remember, don't go past the bottom of this red line. So why don't we put a little bit right there, and then we'll know not to go past that area. All right, then we'll just work our way upwards. Upwards and dragging it towards our bit. That way we'll have our little blue square for the stars, baby. In there, all the way to the edge of the canvas, too. All the way out here. Right? Don't go down past our little spot. You don't want to go down so far. It's very easy to go down too far. And then you'll have blue clouds over here versus white clouds, how they're supposed to be, right? So we gotta have our white stripes. A little bit of blue. Now we're gonna come to the, the phthalo blue, which as you can see is much, 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 much brighter than our Prussian blue is. And we don't wanna get too much of it on the brush, but a little bit, right? You can even see it on the canvas like that. It starts to be a little brighter. We're gonna mix that guy in with that same blue. Remember, not going down past the bottom of our red line. Very easy to do, go too far, because this paint wants to really stretch depending on our pressure, right? Our pressure determines how far the paint will move across the canvas. There we go, very cool. Got our little blue, got our red stripes. We're all set and ready to paint. And normally I would have done this prior to turning on the video, but on special occasion days and holidays and paintings that are just gonna be amazing, I already know they're gonna be amazing. The, uh, we like to go live on all three platforms and show you every single thing step by step from the very beginning to the very end. So, if you're watching over on TikTok and you're like, man, this live's gonna disappear at the end and I'm never gonna be able to see it again, don't worry. You can follow me on Facebook. I've got 379,000 followers on Facebook. They're gonna be watching this video. You're gonna see this video over on Facebook and then you're gonna be able to find it even easier, more easily -est -er. <laughs> You're gonna find it easier on my YouTube page if you go over there. And that's youtube.com slash paint with Josh, just like that. So, how's your fourth going, everybody? Who's at a barbecue right now and they're just so bored out of their mind that you had to come and watch paint with Josh, right? That's what I wanna know. Who's sitting at a barbecue 
All I want to see in the comments is me, or like the little hand-holding guy, me. <laughs> I'm sitting in a barbecue right now, and I really would rather be anywhere else. So I decided to mentally check out of the barbecue and go over and watch Paint with Josh, right? So we're going to come into here, take our little bit of our paper towel, right? A little square, and I'm going to clean up my lines just like this. Take it away, right? You can straighten them up. I'm going to fold it over a little bit. This guy got a little thick, right? Wipe him away. That guy... Not too bad. Just cleaning it up, cleaning up the bottoms. That way we can have a little bit of straightness in there, right? We can even get rid of this back here. Just by wiping it off. And that's the best part. Now, all we're gonna do is paint with some white, guys. It's gonna be fantastic. So remember to tap that screen, share the live, give me a comment, what you guys doing, what we watching, what's going on, how many people are at a barbecue and you just are so bored. You're like, oh, I'm so happy. Paint when Josh came on and paint it today because my goodness, I've, I've eaten enough hot dogs to sink a ship and I just can't do anything else. I'm so full. So here we go, we're gonna take our white on the end of the brush, just like this, you guys. Remember, we're not painting a, a dead straight flag with perfect straight lines and everything. We're painting a seascape. It's just like this guy down here. And for you people on Facebook and, and YouTube, I gotta put it up here so you can see it, right? Sort of looks like a flag, but it's a seascape landscape painting. So let's come in. And again, doesn't have to be perfect. Take your white paint just like that. We're gonna come up here. And because there's no color in the dark section, the paint will remain very bright white, okay? So let's come in here like this, sticking into the white section. Don't go too crazily up into the red, otherwise your clouds are gonna to start to go pink. Trust me, I've done this enough times and had many, many, many pink seascapes where uh, London was like, um, it's supposed to be red, white, and blue, not pink. And I was like, uh, you're right. I don't know what happened. And then I would try it again, and I would try it again, and then eventually I figured out what the heck I was doing wrong. And that was putting too much red, right? You gotta leave more black space than red space. Now we're gonna get a little one inch brush. Since we don't have a whole lot of room, this is a Bob Ross one inch landscape brush. What do they call it? The, the landscape brush or the blender brush, whatever it is. We're gonna take that just cause it's, it's sort of firm, but it's sort of soft. We're gonna start making little circles, just like that. Little bits, and the more that we push with our pressure, guys, right? The more pushing we do, the more the white cloud's gonna grow and the more it's going to blend in with that red which we don't want to happen so very 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 light little touches smallest little things don't go up into the red and then too far back into the clouds right or too far into the red and then back in the clouds you'll bring too much of that pink color in there and of course there's going to be a little bit of pinkish in your clouds but the whiter you can keep them and if you start getting too pink on your brush dab it off on a paper towel like this dab it off didn't even have to wash it just dabbed it off on a paper towel <laughs> i need some new brushes these guys are getting pretty thick just like that, and we're gonna come back over and very softly, very lightly work it down to that next bit. But you kind of want to leave that dark separator that we always talk about, kind of want to leave that in there. And watch as we come over here into the blue. Ooh, it instantly starts lighting up and you can see it. And we don't want that to happen. So don't put too much paint on. Don't drag it too far. Now, let's get all the blue off of that brush. Otherwise our next little cloud is gonna be blue. So let's clean the brush off and or switch to a different brush. I've always got like, I showed how many brushes I use on TikTok the other night. Like my, you guys wanna see how many fan brushes I have going at one time? So we, are, we already have one that's covered in paint, right? So this one that we're using, and then let's see if I can pick them all up at once. It's like a, it's like a bouquet. It's like a bouquet of fan brushes that we're using all on the table, all at one go. Some haven't been used, some have been used more than others. But yeah, there's a lot of, oh, I almost, oh, I did drop. Oh, it went into the paint thinner bucket. It was a brand new one. Oh no. So lots of brushes. And you know what's great? They're those, they're Gap Doctor fan brushes. They're, I think they're $9.99 for seven brushes. You get seven different sizes for 10 bucks. <laughs> Can't beat that deal. Can't beat it. All right, let's wash all the pink and red off of this brush. Even though there's not too much, it's not too contaminated. Let's get rid of it because we want a red, white, and blue scene, you guys. And the more little dark spaces you leave in there, trust me, the more it's gonna look cool. The more you lose your little dark separators between every little color, the more depthless, if that's a word, <laughs> that it's gonna be. So let's go into our white paint coming over here. You guys tell me where you're watching from. What did you have today as far as, uh, as, far as uh, hot dogs and, and hamburgers? Or did you guys, you cooking tri-tip steaks? What are you guys doing? for 4th uh, of July, because I'm hungry. Can somebody send me some food, please? Someone send, send help. Send me some food over here <laughs> to my P.O. box and I'll get it. It might, be, it might be spoiled by the time I get it, but it's okay, it's a thought that counts, right? So we'll take this bit of white onto the brush again and we'll come in here, not try to grab our blue first, just go into that empty section where there's no under color. 
You can see over here that very light color blue. That's because this whole dark uh, square is covered in blue, but all these stripes have nothing underneath it. It's just wet canvas. It's got that clear blending medium on it. So we're going to come in, up into the thing, down, right? Leaving a few bits. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're not painting a perfect flag. We're painting a seascape, impressionistic, sort of flag looking thing. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call it anyway. Now, we all know the amount of paint on the brush is our first P of Paint with Josh. The second P of Paint with Josh is, guys, what? Can you guys tell me? How much are we pushing on this sucker, right? Can you guys tell me what the second P is? Anybody? Pressure says Vicky B is the first person I saw. I'm going to give you a follow. Let's see, right there. All depends on the amount of pressure that we're pushing, right? If you push real hard, man, you can drag that white paint as far as you want to go. Right? If you push real lightly and real soft, you can keep it up there, right? Maybe sometimes drag a little bit of the red or the pink down because it can't just be pure white up there, right? Gotta have a couple little shadowy bits, a couple little blendages, if that's a word. And we'll come over here, bring it a little bit further out into the thing. And see how I came back with the blue and it instantly started to go blue right there? It's because you instantly get too much blue on your brush and then you gotta go back and brighten it up or leave it however you want. But we're gonna come in a little bit brighter of the white right there, just plopping it on and then we're gonna go extra soft so it stays brighter white. See that? Got rid of that blue and it blended a little bit out into our stars, which is cool because it's not supposed to be just a straight perfect line, right? That's neat. Now, wash off the brush again because it got a little bit of blue on it. We don't want the blue all the way over where it's not supposed to be. We all know the stars and stripes. The old red, white, and blue. We know there's no blue over on this side, right? So, very lightly. Just like that. We're not even really using the red. It's just a bit of back color for the sky, right? That's all we really need is that bit of back color. And it's not just pure red. So if you just tuned in and you're watching, it's bright red and crimson mixed together on the brush, just pulling them in different values, mixing them together and then sliding them across, right? And then all we did, again, if you're just tuning in, we had one, uh, I'm gonna show you real quick. So we did about the length of one brush, right? So if you turn it on the side, you get one brush. And then we dropped down two lengths and did another one. And then we dropped down two and we did another one. And then we dropped down one, did one, dropped down two, did one, dropped down two, did one. You got it. You got it. All you gotta do, it's gonna take you a couple times to space it out correctly, right? And again, if you put too much red on the canvas, you're gonna have a, a red, pink, and blue flag instead of a red, white, and blue flag, right? You gotta leave the canvas blank just with the clear blending medium. It's not dry, it's got Bob Ross liquid clear all over it, right? Now again, we left that clear spot in here too so we could come in, oh yes, not gonna make them too big, otherwise they'll turn blue. See, instantly you come up and touch that blue, it's gonna wanna go blue on the brush. I'll come over into here, I'll make these guys a little bit bigger, a little bit pinker, a little bit bigger. Now look at all the red that mixed in right there, right? So we're gonna have to come back and get more white paint and touch it less over there so it doesn't go so pink. But I want them to be different. I don't want it to be just a straight line, right? So make them different. Remember, when you guys do your scenes, you can do it however you want, but just make them awesome, right? And absolutely copy this 100% exactly the same. That's why I put these videos out for you guys. I get comments all the time like, hey, would you mind if I did this video? Yeah, that's why I put it out, so you will do them. You think I, I, I spend my time up here making paintings and then I go, nobody is allowed to copy this at all. You guys can't copy this. Do people do that? Like, do people, do, why would you come online and paint and then not tell people what you're doing? That doesn't make any sense to me. Very lightly. Yeah. Oh God, so light. Because the more you mix in, the darker it's gonna be with that red and it'll start turning pink. And we don't want the pinkies over here. Right now, watch, I'm gonna turn it my, I've been going counterclockwise circles. And I'm gonna turn it the other way sometimes. Sometimes I wanna drag it up this way so we flip around the other way. And make clockwise circles, right? Doesn't all have to be the same every time. Nothing has to be the same, but don't lose that little dark separator underneath. Oh, it's vital, don't lose it. Now, coming into here, ooh, I'm gonna get into the white first before we come up into the blue because then as we all know, those clouds are gonna to wanna to turn blue and it's fine if they get a little bit of blue, little tint on the top, perfect, all right? In fact, let's make them a little thicker over here. A little bit more paint on the brush so it stays whiter, a little bit chunkier, a little whiter, right? Bang. All depends on what you like. Some like them thin, some like them chunky. There we go, just like that. We come in, woo, a little bit, right? You don't want them to go too blue. 
Littlest touches can make the world go round. Leaving that little dark separator under every single, like there's one under there, there's one under there, there's one under there. Little teeny bit on the top of that guy. Dark separators everywhere. Everywhere. And if you lose those dark separators, you're gonna be mad at yourself, promise. Now very lightly swiping over these clouds to the side, so lightly, right? Now that I touched into the blue, why don't we flip the brush over so we don't contaminate those white clouds. If you just soften them a bit, right? You get to decide what they look like. You want them to come up and touch over here? Do it. Totally up to you, right? It doesn't have to be a perfect straight line. We're not just painting a, a regular flag with a ruler and a pencil and everything else, right? We're painting a seascape. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna dab that off. Swipe it up from the bottom to the top, just so, so, so stinking lightly. Again, over to the side. Back, back, back. Has these little wisps. Kind of drag up on some of your thicker bits. They're very cool. Now, all we got to do is come in and put in our little bit, right? That little bit of, of uh, water that's going to go back there. And then we're going to start to build our seascape. It's going to come together very quickly, guys. And we're going to go back and put in our stars. So don't worry about that. All right, we'll come in here and grab it up. And all we really need to do... Some of the times it helps if you have a bit of uh, like a, a, a little yardstick or a meter long stick, or whatever it is, right? You come in there, you leave yourself just a little bit underneath those clouds and then very lightly because we don't want to have the red stripe be white, right? We don't want it to be as white as the clouds. Don't want it to be anything, right? So we get our little line back there and then all we're going to do is just very lightly, very lightly touch that with the white, right? Just so soft, little details here and there and everywhere, right? Come around like that, a little bit thicker on our one side and thinner on this side as it goes off to the edge, right? I gotta move my, my stance over here. Goes off to the side and just kind of blends in with that other red, right? It's still very red. Even though it might look on the colors, uh, on the cameras, it might look orange because of the lights and everything's so bright in here, but it's still very deep, darker red compared to our bright white, right? There's instantly, you can tell a difference in there. And of course, we're not painting a perfect flag, guys. So. Don't worry if it starts going a bit too bright or whatever, it's gonna happen on your first time. It's not gonna come out perfect, I promise. All right, I did my very first one and it came out perfect. I, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna brag or anything, but this was the very first one that we did, right? Came out awesome. I, was, I wasn't as good at painting waves as I am today, right? I've improved at painting waves, but the flag and the colors, they all just came out great. And uh, when I tried to do it a second time, I totally crapped the bed on it and it all came out pink. So, all depends. What happens, how much color you're pushing on it with, right? Got our far off little bit of water back there. And then what we're gonna do is take a smaller fan brush, load it up with some paint, and then make our little mustache shape. And we're gonna make this mustache shape a lot. I always talk about the mustache shape when we're making seascapes, right? It's just like we used to paint waves when we were kids, like those little whoop, whoop, right? The little things that you would imagine, you're on a boat. You're like, ah, this is nice, those little bit of waves, right? And each little wave's got a little peak at the top. And if you go down and up and down, you get that little mustache, like, hello. <laughs> it's your little mustache shape. Come off the back, sliding it back like that. Don't make it too bright, but it doesn't have to be perfect, right? We know it's a seascape, it's not a flag. It's a seascape. There we go, a little bit over there. And then we can even do one more, maybe. Well, no, let's try to, let's try to do that. A little bit difference, 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 right? Even though it's a little wider here and a little red, we can still tell that it's the red section of our flag where it's supposed to be anyway it's supposed to be and you know what i actually put blue in this old, i'm just remembering just now literally two and a half years later just now that i put blue under here just a touch in the last one i wonder i mean i did that i remember i did that because i wanted it to reflect in the corners oh should i do that again guys like oh, all right we're gonna do it we're gonna do it a little where's my where's my paint come over here little bit of our blue right back underneath here just to keep it nice and dark not a whole lot of paint on the brush down underneath there but right then we got red white and blue everywhere Woo that's gonna be cool just a little bit though maybe let's add a little touch of blue over there just because right it'll it'll kind of everything will crisscross and work good for our advantage now we're gonna take our bit we got that section over there our next little wave crasher is gonna be over here we want it to be white and red and white so Let's come back and maybe if it's crashing there, maybe we're going to have a little bit of a, another little mustache over there, right? It's all you need, a little bit of mustache shape and you can always extend it down and change it by pulling it off, sliding it another direction. Don't want this too much paint in the middle right here because it's going to clash. 
with the wave that we're going to put in, leaving little dark separators in between. So again, it's very dark red compared to the white, but even so, there's lighter bits and darker bits all throughout it, and those give us little distance and details all throughout our water. Very cool. This is where we're going to be focusing on. This is probably going to end up being back behind the crashing wave anyway, so it doesn't really matter what the left side looks like. Oh, I got to sneeze. So tell me where, where you're watching from, guys. Well, I almost just died. What's your favorite sandwich? Mm. Are you having pulled pork today? You having brisket? Tri-tips? Do we got, um, what do we got on the grill? We got barbecue, we got uh, chicken, ribs. You guys got ribs? Oh, I'm coming over. You got ribs? I'm coming over. Got barbecue burgers, hot dogs. Oh, tell me what you're eating, guys. I gotta know. I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. <laughs> All right, let's go over here now. Ooh, you know what would be cool? I'm just thinking of this right now. What if we made the eye of our wave a little blue as well? So just again, little tiniest touch of blue. So it's gonna react with the black and the white. And if we put the blue right underneath there in the middle, that's right where our gorgeous little eyeball is gonna be. And it's gonna be fantastic. I always like to do something a little different for every painting. So even though the wave is, I got a comment on, uh, it was on YouTube or Facebook or something. They're like, oh, you, you keep doing the same things over and over again, even with different colors. I'm like, firstly, why would I change like all these paintings keep selling, so I agree. If the paintings stop selling, I might have to start painting something else, right? But people want to learn landscapes, and they seem to like how I teach landscapes and what my landscapes look like. And so why stop painting landscapes and start painting something else that I'm not good at painting when I'm already good at doing this? Doesn't make any sense. So here we go. We're going to load up our white brush again, that little bit on each side, not all the way up to the squeezy bit or whatever this piece is called. I always forget what this little shiny piece is called, but it's obviously like squeezing all the bristles in so hard that they won't come out, right? So the squeezy bit is what we call it. Now over here, we're going to come up to this side. We're going to start coming up just like that. If you tap it in, you leave that little bit of like water as it starts to break up into a million pieces and fall over. It's exactly what we want. And then we're going to come down here Swiping it down just like that, right? Coming into that little blue section. And we're going to eventually meet up with a little flick over here and a little flick coming down this way. And, of course, we've got to go off to the side. And that looks just like an X, right? X is going to mark the spot right there. So pay attention to that X. And we're going to be right back with some more paint up onto the brush. Let's come up here. Just tap it in and then roll it over. doesn't have to meet. You don't have to make your perfect shape just like that, right? We're going to add in our little bit of our eye of our wave. It's going to be a little blue. We don't want to have the two colors touch, so leave a little bit of dark space in between. Come back with our little one inch brush, so softly pushing it up to that next bit, but not touching the two bits of color together, right? You don't want those guys to touch. You want to leave that little dark separator, just like this. Darkness, 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 darkness. Dark under that guy. Leave it dark. Now over here, you can push a little bit harder. You can extend your wave. It goes a little bit lighter color blue. That's really cool. I like that. That's really cool. Now we got to come back in and start adding our dark separator back in here, right? Before we do our wave, let's do this bit. So all we have is a little bit of white on the brush and then we're going to come flicking it back, but we're not going to just shoot it straight up or straight at a 45. We're going to go over to the side and then flick up just like a little, like a little smiley face, right? A little flick. Now, as we go, the, the angle of those flicks are going to change. So we're going to start coming more out, 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 right? Little bits, little bits. We're leading it. Ooh, that blue is so fire. I'm doing that on the next one too. Remember guys, this painting is for sale. You can buy it at paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Search for number 851. I almost forgot to tell you guys it was for sale. Actually, I don't even, don't even quote me. It might actually have already sold. I, all my devices are in use right now, so I, I can't tell if it's sold or not. I have nothing to look at. So it may have sold. Maybe someone in the comments has bought it or claiming it. I don't, I don't know. We're going to take our little bit back there. Once we line up at that point, we're going to start flicking out, right? That's our little pivot spot. So we come back to that spot, start flicking out this way, back over that way. Very cool. You can see it's not too blue. It's not very deep, dark blue. It's very bright, actually. Very bright white. And the more that we want to keep it white, the more it's going to retain our flag's shape and stuff. So let's add a bit more white onto it from our brush. All right, little different places. Doesn't have to be perfect. The water out there is never perfect. Now look at how big that little wave section is, right? It looks huge if we were out there. It'd be like a wave like this, just big in between. So let's flick it back a little bit more. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And the closer you get to that next little bit of brightness, the more it's gonna shrink the wave down, right? And right at the tip, I like leaving it a little bit more open. 
That way it looks like it's got a little bit more shadow right where it lipped up right there. Very cool. All right, taking this guy very softly, blending it back, not doing it so much that we get rid of all the little white streaks. Those are our little highlight bits and little different things are very neat. Very neat, guys. Now remember, if you're watching over on YouTube, make sure you give me a thumbs up. More thumbs ups mean more people are going to see the video, which means more thumbs ups, which means more people are going to see the video. And the more views you get that way, right? So, just like that. Now, let's come out here. And let's just say we finished this side over here. And we started coming down very lightly, right? Very small amount of paint because we're in that red section. And we don't want the red to go too bright, right? But then maybe our little wave started coming out this way. It's rolling down that way. And then maybe it turned and went like that. You're like, what are you doing, Josh? Well, watch. If we go in the other direction, we flip it down this way and we leave a little dark separator, right? It's just like doing our little mustache shape, just at a different angle. So our mustache now went over there. Same like we did up here, right? Or over here, you go up and then over to the side. If they all line up, it's going to make it look right. Leave that little dark separator in between. And then we'll bring our bit of wave down. It's going to be really cool, guys. So make sure you tell me where you're watching from. What are you eating today? You got those hamburgers going? You got the hot dogs? What you got going on? What you got going on over there? Let me see. So is this one sold or not? Does anybody know if it's sold? I can't, uh, I don't, I'm not able to tell. Not able to tell. All of my devices are in work. Watching from Florida, from the UK. We got brisket on the smoker, chicken salad, New Mexico. Not yet, it hasn't sold. Okay, let's see, Florida. This is number 851, 851. So if you go over to my Etsy store, go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Type that into your browser. Once it opens up the store, there's a search bar. Type in the word TikTok. And it'll bring up all the paintings that we ever painted on TikTok that are still available to sell. This one will be the only one that doesn't have a picture. And it'll say, uh, American 16 by 20 inch American flag seascape, uh, Independence Day, blah, blah, blah. Whole long, big long title. You'll find it. It's the only one that's numbered 851. So head over there and grab it. Now, before we finish any more of this and let any more of that color get too close to this color, all right, we're going to come up here and work on our rotation of the wave, right? Again, we don't have to do it however we set it out initially. All we're gonna do is grab about halfway over our eye and start to flick, just a little bit, right? It'll flick, it'll flick. Remember, up here, we're gonna to have to add a little bit more paint because it's gotta be a different color than the red back there. It's gonna help it. Now flick it down, flick it down. We don't have to make it so big. It doesn't have to go so far, right? And you don't want it to be so round that it looks like a, you know, <laughs> like a tube that we're gonna go down, right? Now, let's get some new paint on the brush. Just loading up a little bit of new white paint. Didn't wash the brush, just ran it through the thing to add some new bit, right? Come up here, instantly you get that little bit of brightness on the top, right? Just by touching it, really. Touch it and like a little flick, just and pull your brush away. A little bit of brightness on the top as it's coming over. And then as we all know, it's gonna get darker and darker and darker as it drags down and wraps around and does all this stuff. But we don't wanna do all that yet, right? You don't have to go too far. So let's take the brush, let's flip it around to the other side, rotate the handle, right? The first handle was out here. Now we're going to turn it back this way, which turns the head of our brush, and then we want to make a little triangle shape right there. Perfect. It's exactly what you want. And then with whatever's left on our brush, we can go back and make it brighter, but we want to come back to the same little pivot point. Remember we talked about our pivot point over here? It's another one right here. Start there, go out a little bit lower. Start there again, a little bit lower. Start there again, a little bit lower. See how we're rotating it? Coming from the same spot. And then you can go back in, fill in those little bits, and it'll eventually look like water, trust me. <laughs> trust as we come down just like a fan would open up and it's gonna make this little heart shape and then once we get there we're gonna come in front of it with this bit of wave making that a bit brighter and all of our little rotations you get your little heart shape and then you can go back and get rid of whatever you don't want with your shadowy bits of splashy crashy spray so let's come in and make this guy a little bit brighter just touching it a little bit with the white both sides there we go I want it to come down too far and again you can turn your brush on the side and just use, the, just use the corner if you want. You don't have to touch the whole brush and use the whole amount of bristles, right? And if you lose that dark little spot back there, you're really gonna hate it because that's connected to your dark separator on your next bit of wave, right? It's put there for a reason. Put there for a reason. Now we're gonna drag it out, make this whole big old long bit. You can see as it goes over the other colors, it starts to change into those other colors. The red down there, all that wicked just <laughs> get all those sound effects in there, guys. Gotta have the sound effects. All right, let's clean off the brush so we have a nice, clean, fresh brush to work with. Gotta have a freshie. 
Gotta have a freshie to work with. All right, now we're gonna come in again. We're gonna start back here and connect this guy to where he's gonna come down and land. All right, now we're gonna take a little bit of white, not as much as we've used before, because we don't wanna have it be too bright, right? And then we're gonna go back and soften everything anyway. You can see how we're turning more like a parentheses right here, like that. That helps it make it start to look like it's round and rolling over. And we'll come down. We're gonna fill up this white section so we don't lose too much of our white to the, the uh, red color, right? Then we'll come back, get a little bit more white on the brush. Start to come down here, right? A little bit brighter on this side, but not trying to fill up all of the, the color with white. You still wanna see some of those dark bits, some of the bits of dark canvas underneath. And then we'll come down, starts turning red into this side as our bit comes out. And then we decide where the, the bit of sandy water is gonna crash. This one's gonna crash very close to the bottom of the canvas. Very cool. Remember, don't lose all your dark spaces. Don't put too much paint on there. You don't want to lose it all. Now, we'll come back. Let's not even add any new brush, uh, new paint on the brush. We're just going to start to soften this guy. Dragging him down. In those little rounded shapes, right? Now we got a little bit of paint on the brush. We can decide. Maybe we'd come back in there and start making our little rounded flicks. But there's not enough paint on the brush to show. So, let's come back in. The only problem is I don't want it to be too bright white out here. So we're going to dump off a little bit of our color. As we're rolling down, we start to pick up those little bits of white and, and uh, sorry, red and white. We come in here now, we've got a little bit of color. We're gonna stay into our white, sliding it back and then going up, right? We don't need to rock it up like a, like a ramp, like Evil Knievel's gonna jump off it, right? Start coming in, then we're gonna make our little circles a little bit tighter, a little tighter, a little tighter, a little tighter, just so we have that little bit, and then it starts to blend in with the red. We're losing more and more and more paint off the brush every time we swipe it, right? To come down. We don't want our colors to change too much. And just like that, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, right? Filling in that little bit of white. And then it all depends on how you pull the brush. <laughs> Wicked, guys. Red, white, and blue all within four inches on the canvas. That's cool. That's cool. That's better than any of the other ones that we ever did. On this, uh, the very first one, we kind of lost our, our eye of our wave. It wasn't very bright. And, uh, this one is very neat though, I like that. Very cool, gonna take a little bit of extra paint. We're gonna have it be a bit brighter, right? And then on this guy, it's gonna be a bit brighter. And we're gonna lose some of it down there. It's gonna start to blend in. So we just gotta brighten it up just a little, pulling in those opposite directions of how our other water is going, right? And then it looks like there's a little lip right there, a little mustache, whoosh, 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 right? Across the whole thing. All we're doing is making little mustaches, but we gotta shrink that dark separator. So pull it in. Start working the paint up this way, right towards the dark separator, just as close as you can get. Leave that little bit of darkness. It'll look like a ridge in the, in the water. It's gonna look really cool. Really cool. Soften that guy, sliding over him. All right, just hitting it enough to make the paint start to get rid of those brush strokes. Man, that's neat. Look at that wrap around. That is so cool, guys. So cool. All right, let's see. I'm gonna come over here and make this guy a little bit brighter with the white. Just pulling off little streaks, little highlights, little stuff right in there. Just so we retain that bit of red, white stripe action, right? Now we gotta come in and make up a really dark color. And you guys are gonna have to start coming up with a title for this painting. If you buy the painting, you get to name the painting. So get over there to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, purchase this painting, it's number 851, and then you get to choose the name. And a lot of people will start commenting the names of what they want this painting to be called. You know what I mean? Like Independence Beach or whatever. You guys come up with a name. I've named it way too many times. Way too many paintings named to try to come up with any more names. That's why I just started numbering them. Just start numbering them after a while, right? There we go. That's cool. Now we do want to have that look like you got to pull it so you have our little brush strokes coming down in the same direction like water would, right? If you got strokes going different ways, it's not going to look the same. We're going to add a little bit more bright white, just very lightly. If we can get any of it to stick. There we go. Don't lose that little triangle back there. That little dark triangle. That's your bestie. You don't want to lose that guy. Don't lose that little triangle and dump a little bit extra white right down in there as it's coming down, rolling over, but you got to use that little pivot point. You have to make it look like it's water coming down, right? And if it's not thick enough, it's not going to stand out and be as bright as we want it to be. So, let it rock and roll down in there. 
Very cool. I like that. That is nice. Have that bit come right down in front, match up with our longest little bit right in the center. Whoop. Very cool. Okay. Now we're going to wash that off. We're going to use all that dark color that we just created. Now, who knows Paint with Josh's three favorite colors to make a shadow out of? You guys know the three favorite colors? They're right here. Black, crimson, and blue. Mix them all up into this real deep, dark, shadowy mix, right? And then we're going to come over here, just on the one corner of the brush, right? On the one side, we're going to start to come up and start to connect to our bit of dark separator underneath here and just cup up into that bit of white. Pop, 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 right? Wrap up into it. So now it looks like that whole dark line goes back that way, right? All connected. Doesn't all have to be the same size, but connected anyway. Now, I'm going to come in here and start to slap and come down. We don't have to follow our whole thing and go all the way down here with our thing and go around it. We can come in and cut off wherever we want it to be, all right? Just by slapping it. Leave a few little dark areas. The more we go out here, the more little darknesses we're going to leave into a bit of our wave. And then we're going to come up into the sky, into the above the horizon, back on top of the water, just like that. Making our little crashy, watery spray down into here. Awesome. Remember, it's not going to be a perfect flag because it's an ocean scene. And if you're going to have it be an ocean scene, you got to have paint it like an ocean scene. Okay, now. All those deep, dark colors we got down in there are so neat, guys. So cool, because we're going to come back and get a little bit of our liquid white, which is the same thing as liquid clear, but look, it's so dri look, it dripped. Drip, 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 right? It's crazy wet versus our very thick, like, cake icing. This stuff is like milk. So wet. If you spill that jar, it's going all over your floor, right? Now, a little bit of that white, wettish paint. We're gonna come up into here. We're just gonna start tapping on top of the darkness, making sure we crest above the wave like that. If you go above the wave, maybe the teensiest bit above your horizon back there, man, it just adds so much distance. Taking the same corner, we're just gonna start flinging like this, and then once we touch the canvas, we gotta move, but we're gonna stay on top of the horseshoe, right? We're not gonna go all the way down. We're not gonna come down into here. You don't want the light color to touch the light color. That's what this dark separation is. So we're leaving half of the dark colors. We're going on top of the shadows. Bop, 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 bop. Not trying to cover the shadows, right? Just going on top of them. A few little bits, so you leave a little bit of shadow underneath as well. All right? Got to have some shadowing underneath. And then down in here, all we're doing just smacking at the canvas. Just going boop, 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 flicking at it. But we're leaving a lot of dark areas as well, right? So even though there's a lot of white up there, there's also a lot of dark area in between that white. And that's going to make it look like crashing watery spray. So we're going to take our bit of our one inch brush, a little bit of it, just a piece of it. <laughs> I don't know why I say that. I'm totally idiot. We're going to take our one inch brush and come up here and very lightly start to mix because that liquid white, my goodness, it really, really, really wants to grow fast. Oh man. So lightly, just till we get to the corner down here, right? Because the water hasn't really come down and smashed down yet at all those different places. It's in the midst of falling and rolling over. And then we're not going to touch some of those things. We're going to leave them just like that. So then we can come back in with the same bit of liquid white. And we're going to come in. We're just going to slap at it and flap at it and tap at it. Right? And then go over it even less the next time. Even less. And that way, we'll show a few more bits of detail. So even less. Remember, this stuff wants to move so fast. Watch this. Oh, just the teeniest bit can get it to slide anywhere. It's so wet, that color, right? Little teeny things. Sometimes we miss places. Sometimes we don't. Leave it just like that, guys. Oh, God. Oh, so fantastic. Okay, we're going to take some of this liquid white. We're going to pull it down underneath at an upward angle. All right, so we go down like that. It's going to make it make the sand look wet. And slide it over, right? Bring it over to the side. And get that wet, sheeny, sandy, watery look back there. Now we're going to come in, not using any more liquid white until the very end when we put our stars in and we put the spray of the ocean in. All right, so what we're going to do is come into our thicker titanium white pile, just like that, and pull it down just on the one side of the brush. Don't even need it on the back, just the one side. Come about a quarter inch underneath any bit of brightness that we have, that white color, right? A quarter inch underneath. Just like that. Now, we got to go pressure, guys. Do we go hard pressure or do we go soft pressure all the way down off the canvas? You guys let me know. Well, I'm going to let you know. It's hard pressure. Look, stretching it all the way down the end. Stretch it, stretch it, stretch it. Right? And we're going to pull it to the side. 
leaving that little bit of sheeniness, shininess, wickedness. It's gonna look cool. Let's take a little bit of that liquid white over here, coming along the edge, just along the edge, wherever we want the little bit of our water line to be. Sometimes we use the liquid, uh, the, the knife for the water line, sometimes we don't. But for this one, I think we should. Looks pretty cool. And it slide its way up that bit of wave, right? All depends what you want yours to look like. It's gotta be a seascape, remember. It's a flag, but it's also an ocean scene. So we're gonna do our job to make it look like an ocean scene. That's cool, right there, guys. Right there. Now, take a little brush that's got a little, some good flickability, right? And that means is when you bend the bristles over, man, they just shoot right back up. Cause that's gonna help us flick all the little bits off into the distance. We're gonna get a little of that liquid white mixed with the titanium white, small little bit, gonna put it out here on the edge. Might need a bit more than that. Just a bit more, a little bit more of our titanium white, just to thicken it up a touch, right? Loading the brush full of that super wet paint, and then we're just gonna go off the edge. We're gonna flick it. You're gonna go have it hit your palette, which is gonna drag all those bristles back and then fling them forward, ready? We're gonna go like that. Bop, and start shooting in all these little spray bits. <laughs> Take you a million years to paint all those little spray bits all by themselves, right? Now, what we did in the first one, let's do something cool for this one, right? Let's put our little spray brush down for a second, grab up a teeny tiny liner brush, as we don't wanna have too much, and why don't we do, so in this one, in the very first one, I hid the, my initials, JK, in the sky, and then uh, for the one last night, we did the same thing, hid my initials, JK, for this, in the sky. But for this one, let's put all right, let's see if we can do this. I have something to rest my hand on up here. So we're gonna put one right there, one right there, one right there. Look like a 40, you guys. All right, and then we're gonna go pop, 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 pop. Fourth, that's cool. That's cool. Just had that idea just now. So let's take the rest of our little bit of our titanium white and liquid white bits, and we're gonna fling just a couple little pieces into the stars, just so it's not totally visible, right? That's very neat, I like that. That's cool, guys. So, never like to make them 100% the same as we did before, right? Always have to like to put some bit of difference in there, whether it's here, there, or everywhere. And that one turned out really neat. So let's put this down. Let's fix my little problem over here. There we go. Got stuff falling over all, all over the place. Now we're gonna sign the painting and then we're gonna name it, guys. So what do you think for a name? Start typing it in the comments and I'm gonna check all the names and then we're gonna see and the best name is gonna get a shout out and a follow from Paint With Josh because that's how we rock and roll. Remember, you can buy this painting if you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. It's number 851. So type 851 into the search bar once you're in my store and you'll be able to find it. If it's still available. I don't know if it's sold or not, but if it's still there, it'll be available. All right. Got that. Let's add the family in for the signature. Put them back in here. Just like that, guys. Oh, very small for these ones. Very cool. Toss them in like that. And we'll add the old JK down here, maybe in the splashy bit on this side. We'll put it down there. So remember guys, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. You can find this painting, plus tons of other paintings, all sorts of stuff. We're inside in a studio of the, a City of the World Art Gallery. So go to cityoftheworldartgallery.com. You can check out my stuff over on their website. Fantastic. Now let's see what we got for names and then we'll get out of here. Come back and paint another one. See if we can do it again. Do it again in 50 minutes. Sea of the free, I like that. Fourth of July freedom flag, independence wave. Rockets red glare, I dig that one too. Man, this one came out really good, you guys. I really like it. I like that little, that little teeny tiny hint of blue in the water, I really dig that. Sea to shining sea. Let's see. Amazing job. Thank you, Ash Red. Love you. Waves of Glory. I dig all of those guys. Wave of Freedom in the Evening Sky, says Bella Tree Arts over here on YouTube. Oh, you definitely got to try this. I've got like two or three or four versions. Independence Night. Daily Independence. Waves of Freedom, says Paint with Jimmy. That's a cool title. Waves of Freedom. 
Has no one said like Independence Beach? The one beneath it's called Memorial Beach. We should call the one on top Independence Beach, I would think. I would think if it was me. But let's see. United Seas, I dig that. Waves of Independence, Kathy's Custom Art, dig that one too. Let's see, Patriot Beach, Independence Beach. Emma. <laughs> oh, Freedom Cove, I like that. Where, who said that? Where'd that go? Airy Fairy Fay says Freedom Cove. I dig that one. That's a cool title. That's what we're gonna name it. So, everybody go follow Airy Fairy Fay, because Freedom Cove, I just like the word cove. I don't know why. I like the word cove. So we're gonna call this one Freedom Cove. This is number 851. Comes with a certificate of authenticity and signature on the back. 851, a Paint With Josh original. You can head over, you can get this canvas uh, at paintwithjosh.etsy.com or just go to paintwithjosh.com and the Etsy link will be the first thing you see. What do we call it again? I already forgot. Freedom Cove. Excellent. Man, this one was painted on 7, 4, 23. And like I said, we're all going to go to paintwithjosh.com to search for my Etsy store, my YouTube channel, my Facebook, my Instagram, my TikTok. Everything's over there on paintwithjosh.com. So go check it out. I want to thank you guys for tuning in and watching this show. It came out fantastic. This one will be available for sale if it is not already sold. And uh, it's got all sorts of framing options. You could buy just the canvas or have it framed right here on the show if you purchase it now. So, uh, or send me a message if it's purchased. I'll, if you buy it with the frame, we're going to frame it. So, um, But I love you guys. I can't stay up here all night. I, don't, I can't respond to anybody's comments. I don't know if the painting's sold. I'm on all three devices at once. So let's at least say goodbye to YouTube and Facebook. I love you guys. Thank you both for tuning in. You're both fantastic. All of you are amazing. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that share button and send the link out for the fourth. This one turned out awesome, and I love you guys. Take care. Have the rest of a good day, and happy Independence Day. Bye-bye. Oh.